Hello, friends. Welcome to the ADC Double Cut. My name is Micah Woods, and I have updated a photosynthetic photon flux density calculator. And I mentioned this a couple episodes ago. Today, I want to show you a blog post that has some of these numbers, and I hope that this will explain in practical terms what we are looking at when we're looking at photosynthetic photon flux density, which is the instantaneous measure of the light that grass can use. You can get a quantum meter, which is a meter that measures the photosynthetically active radiation. I took one to Spain in a trip in 2016, and I took a lot of measurements. This was in late spring, and I was in Catalonia. We also went over into southern France, and it was generally sunny with no clouds during that season. And because of that, when I was taking these measurements of photosynthetically active radiation with this quantum light meter from Spectrum Technologies, I was measuring the full sun light. And I could also, on a, on a putting green, for example, I could go measure the light in full sun, and then I could move into the shaded area where it was shaded by trees and measure the reduction in light. And I showed in this blog post, which I will put a direct link to in the show notes. The blog post has a title, Shade and Sun. And this is, this is very important because it's out of the turfgrass manager's control. So if you've got shade problems and it's out of your control, then, uh, I, I mean, the, the light that comes from the sun is sort of out, out of control. Maybe some of the shade can be modified, but if, if you can't cut down trees or you can't thin trees or you can't, um, you know, you, you're not going to take the roof off of a football stadium, right? There's, there's some things that you're either going to need to supplement the light or you would need to manage the grass differently or choose a different grass species that could tolerate a different light level if there's not enough light. So when you're dealing with this type of problem with light, it is important to understand how the numbers work. And I want to explain how simple this is. If you're in full sun, you can measure for any time of the day what the light is. And I showed a photo in this post where the photosynthetic photon flux density, or PPFD, was 749 at the particular time that this was being measured. The 749 that was measured means that this was 749 micromoles of photons per square meter per second. So that's an instantaneous measure of the photosynthetically active radiation for, for that instant, for that second. And I immediately took a reading in the shade. So, okay, we're, we're, we're a couple seconds away now, but for the next second in the in the shade, when we make that measurement, um, this was now in the shade 139. 139 in the shade, 749 in full sun. So those areas have a difference of about 80%. In fact, what was measured in the shade was 18.6% of what was measured in full sun. And that is the general rule of thumb that when I have measured in tree shade, moving from a full sun measurement of photosynthetically active radiation, moving into tree shade, then that if it's if it's full tree shade and not scattered tree shade where you have some direct sunlight coming through the canopy. But if you're in the full shade of a tree, it will tend to reduce the light, the photosynthetically active radiation, by about 
So the if if the value was one thousand, which would be about half of full uh, sunlight at midday in the summer, because you'll peak at about two thousand micromoles of photons per square meter per second. You'll peak at about two thousand in the summer, in the middle of the day, in full sun. So if you if you were at 2,000, and then if you move under a tree, you'll be about 400. It reduces it by about 80%. And if, if it is mid-morning, then you won't be up to 2,000. Because 2,000 is when the sun is, is high in the sky. When the sun is lower in the sky, you will be at something like 749. Or perhaps by the time you get to 9 a.m., then you're up around a thousand. Of, of course, it depends your latitude and longitude, um, and and we're going to get to that where you can find out what this would be at your location. But uh, let's say you're at a thousand at nine a.m. You could go into the tree shade, and I expect that it would be about two hundred. So you're you're missing a lot of light if you're uh, if you're under a tree, and that's why grass and uh, other sun-loving plants don't do so well under trees because there's just not enough light. So that that's one thing to understand is that trees will reduce the photosynthetically active radiation by about 80%. But of course, that's, that's when the shade is falling on the turf. If, if there's shade all day, then your entire day would be reduced by about 80%. But if you're, uh, if you only have shade from the tree for a portion of the day, and other times you, you do have full light there, then that will be a little bit different. But it's, uh, it's just when you are in shade, it's going to reduce by about 80%. Now, uh, I think that it's quite simple to find out what the PPFD would be anywhere in the world. And you can find that out just by looking at what time it is. You can predict this based on latitude and longitude and day of the year and time. So there's a series of equations that I put into a calculator. And I I updated that calculator this week. It's a partial update, but it makes it a lot easier to use. And there's a chart that I'm showing now, a a chart that I made from this particular trip in Spain. And it is a regression of measurements that I made with that particular light meter where I recorded what the meter measured. So that is on the vertical y-axis, the PPFD measured with the quantum meter. And those values range from, of course, it will be zero at nighttime, and it's about 2,000 at midday. And then on the horizontal x-axis, it's the same units. It's the PPFD going from zero to 2,000. Except now it's not measured. It is calculated. It is the calculated value simply from the date of the year, from the time of the day, and from the latitude and longitude. If you provide those four inputs, then we know how much light is reaching the top of the atmosphere, the top of the Earth's atmosphere, above the particular point where we're standing. So that is the latitude and longitude tells us where we are standing or the area of turf grass that we want to to know how much light is reaching it. And there's something called the solar constant, which is the amount of light that reaches the top of the atmosphere. That is, it varies a little bit, but that is relatively constant. So if we take that as a constant, and then we just need to know how much is transmitted down through the atmosphere to the Earth's surface, and that generally is about 75% of the light. We'll make it all the way down to the Earth's surface. And then we can convert from uh, 
energy unit to photosynthetic units, and now we have our PPFD. So it is a straightforward series of calculations that I've put into a calculator. So if you're interested in this, you can figure out wherever you are on the planet. I'll, these equations don't work so good. Uh, I'll tell you what the exceptions are. The equations don't work so good if you're north of the Arctic Circle or south of the Antarctic Circle. So if you're above about 66 degrees north latitude, or if you're below about 66 degrees south latitude, um, I don't, I, I, I've set the calculator to not uh, provide an answer. But for anywhere inside the Arctic and Antarctic circles, you'll be able to calculate this. And the way that this, uh, well, I, I, I just want to mention the chart that I'm showing real quick. So uh, if you're listening to this, you may want to check out the video or check out the blog post, which I'll have a direct link to here. Um, but you, you can see on the chart that whether this was calculated from from the method that I just described, saying if we know the date, the time, the latitude, and the longitude, these equations can calculate what the solar constant amount of light energy is at the top of the atmosphere, and we know the point that we're at, we assume a 75% transmittance of light down to the Earth's surface on a sunny day, and that's going to give us our photosynthetic photon flux density right at the grass surface for any square meter in between the Arctic and Antarctic circles, which is pretty amazing. And so what the chart is showing is when I went to these locations, and I've, I've labeled them, some of them uh, you'll be familiar, basically they're golf course names, although uh, we also went to uh, Plaza de Catalonia, which is a, uh, a, a location in Barcelona, uh, Carcassonne uh, in France, which is a lovely castle town. El Saler is, is a famous golf course uh, in Valencia. Escorpion is a lovely golf club in Valencia. So we were, we were in between Valencia and southern France when I was taking these measurements. And it didn't matter whether I had my meter and measured in full sun, or whether I just ran the calculation from my latitude and longitude point. So what I did is I had my, my handy notebook. I often have a handy notebook that I carry around, and I, I take some measurements. So I noted what my location was. So that, that allowed me to look up the latitude and longitude, and I noted the date and the time and then I noted what I measured with the photos, uh, with the quantum light meter, which which gives us those photosynthetically active radiation measurements. So I noted that measurement, and then I ran the calculations and checked what it was, and they're they're on a very close relationship. It's it's basically a one to one relationship. So that tells me that this calculator works pretty good, at least for uh, at, at least for that particular part of the world. And I expect I, I, I've done this also in Japan. I've done this also in Thailand. So I've been closer to the equator and uh, in more human regions, and it it works good. So, Let's go ahead and look at this calculator. Let's let's look at this calculator and I'll show you the updates that I've made or I'll describe to you the updates that I've made to this calculator. And and this is uh, there's a, a direct link to this calculator in the blog post uh, Shade and Sun, which there will be a link to in the video description and in the show notes. And this is PPFD, which stands for photosynthetic photon flux density, that's your photosynthetically active radiation for one second, and DLI, which is the PPFD summed from sunrise to sunset. So DLI is daily light integral, which is all the light, all the, all the photosynthetically active radiation that the grass received in one day. 
So we we need to know the time, the day, the latitude, and longitude. In a recent episode of the ATC Double Cut, I mentioned that the app was not so user friendly because I had coded it with the longitude numbers being set only as degrees west of Greenwich. But if you go to Google Maps and look up your latitude and longitude, you're going to find um, longitude as plus or minus. So if you're west of Greenwich, it's going to be minus. If you're east of Greenwich, it's going to be a positive longitude. Um, and and that, so that'll go up to 180 degrees uh, west, or let's let's say it goes up to 179.99 east, which would be a positive number, or it goes down to uh, negative 179.99 west. So west of Greenwich is negative, east of Greenwich, like uh, Dubai, New Delhi, Bangkok, Shanghai, Tokyo, though, uh, those areas will be a, a positive longitude. So I've, I've coded it now where you can just put in your longitude uh, as a negative number. If you're in the United States or Canada, you will put in a negative number because you're west. And if you are in Dubai or New Delhi or Shanghai, you put in a positive number because you're east. And I deleted the part about the time zone because uh, the calculation actually needs to know what your time zone is so it can calculate the solar noon for where you are um, because the sun isn't always directly overhead uh, exactly at noon. So the, there are a lot of calculations happening in the background here to get the right number, but I uh, am trying to estimate or, or the code is trying to estimate what time zone you are in based on what longitude you put in and based on what your latitude is. And then there's an option for to adjust the transmittance. So if you want to say that you have a lot of air pollution and you think the transmittance is only 60% or only 50% or something like that, you can adjust that if you want to. So I set it by default to be for um for bangkok um so so i've set it at 13 degrees north latitude and 100 degrees east of greenwich which is where bangkok is and then it's saying at 12:20 in the afternoon the expected ppfd in full sun is 1994 if there are no clouds on this day, the DLI at this location is expected to be 58. But I'm not in Bangkok right now. I'm in Tokyo. So let me let me adjust it to be 2.20 in the afternoon. So I'll set this to 14.20. And in Tokyo, I'm about 30. 36 degrees north so I'll change it to 36 degrees north Tokyo's about 139 east so I'll set this longitude at 139 and now this has changed it says now uh, the app is making calculations expecting this is in the Asia Tokyo time zone so that's a bit of a check if, if you start picking locations that are over the ocean this time zone calculation doesn't seem to work right. But um, for the places that I've checked, when we're over land, it seems to, to put us in the proper time zone. So, so I think the calculations are being made correctly. So now at 2.20 in the afternoon in Tokyo, the PPFD, if I would go outside this hotel room, go out into the, it is a sunny day in Tokyo, uh, and and take a measurement, I would get one thousand six hundred thirty six if I if I had a meter, and that it's pretty amazing to to know what that number is. And then today, because it's close to the longest uh, day of the year, so if there are no clouds on this day, the DLI at this location is expected to be sixty three point five, and that is. That's a lot. Let's go even later in the day. So right now it's it's checking for 
2.20 in the afternoon. Let's go to 6.20 this evening, which will be close to sunset. Uh, so I set it to 18.20, which is 6.20 p.m. And now it's saying at this location, the expected PPFD at 18.20 is 231.8, 232. So it, it's it's approaching uh, zero. And we can go and say, let, let's go to 9 p, 920, which is after sunset. And so now it, when we change the time to that, it says the expected PPFD in full sun is zero at, at this location. So what you need to do is, is find your latitude and longitude and put in the time of day that you want and the date that you want. So we could also leave the location the same. I'll go ahead and set this back to 2.20 in the afternoon. But now I'm going to change the date. Instead of July 20, let's change it to December 20, which is one of the shorter days of the year. So we'll set this for December uh, 2023 on December 20. And now the expected PPFD in full sun at 2.20 in the afternoon is only 734. Remember, if you are in the summertime and it's in the middle of the day, you will have a PPFD that's close to 2,000. But in the wintertime at this, excuse me, at this latitude, which is 36 degrees north of the equator, um, you're going to be somewhere less than 1,000 at midday, I think. Let's check it for for noon. Yeah, it's a 1,076 at midday uh, on, well, that's at 1220. Let's see. I don't know what solar noon is. I th yeah, at, at 1120 in the morning, which might be close to solar noon in Tokyo, um, on December 20, it would be 1,090. That would be your PPFD. So, isn't this an exciting topic for a podcast, just talking about numbers and photosynthetic photon flux density? But this, this is a cool app. So I'm going to, uh, well, I've made some notes about other things to add to this app, which I think it would be useful to have something that you could view or download that might show the entire day. So if you're interested in a particular day, um, we could show how the PPFD would change from sunrise to sunset on that particular day. And then that would sum to what the day's DLI would be. And we could also show for the particular location, the day length, what the sunrise and sunset times are, and show even for that particular latitude and longitude point, the app could show what the DLI would be all through the year. So we could see which days had the peak DLI, which days had the minimum DLI. And now this is based on full sun conditions. Uh, this, is, this is something that is often useful to know what the maximum light would be. Because then you just have to say, okay, I've got tree shade. And that tree shade you can expect will reduce the light by 80%. And if you have an app like this, you could calculate what the PPFD would be at the start of the shade period. And you can calculate what the PPFD would be at the end of the shade period. And you can know how much photosynthetically active radiation the grass in full sun is getting and you can calculate how much is missing from the area that is shaded. This is something that allows you to talk about the quantities of light that are required and the quantities of light that are missing from shade. And that, to me, is useful when communicating about needing to manage the grass differently needing to change the grass or needing to thin out the source of shade or remove the source of shade altogether. So this is something that I have been interested for. I, I've been interested in this for a long time. And I know I have a lot of posts on the blogs, blog post. I'm sorry, I have a lot of posts on the ATC website 
about this. And you can go to the ATC website, AsianTurfGrass.com, and find out a lot more information about these topics. And I, I, I want to mention also that the code for this is on GitHub. And you can go to the, um, the GitHub repository for this where you'll, you'll be able to get to that directly from, from the Shiny app where I put a link to the, to the GitHub repository where you can see all of the code. So if you're really interested in this and you want to try to code this in Excel or something, or you want to make some of these calculations yourself, it is all in GitHub. Um, so I will, I will show this app and then, um, I can scroll down to see the code on GitHub. And it is the PPFD by time repository. And it's got, uh, if you go into the R section and specifically, specifically, if you look at maybe, maybe an R, the functions part, um, no, no, it's, I put all the code in the server file. So, um, if you, if you go down and look at the server file, um, you can start seeing some of these calculations, the inverse distance from, from the sun, the earth, from the sun and the solar declination and the sunset hour angle and all, all of these things, the, the extraterrestrial irradiance, all these things are being calculated in the app based on the input that you give. And that is, is something that I hope you will find useful. Uh, and anybody who is listening to this and, and sticking with me about the PAR and the PPFD and the DLI must be really into the details of, uh, of turf and the light that reaches the turf. So, you know, the, there's four main things that are, are going to affect how grass grows. It's the light the water, the temperature, and the nutrition, and, and especially the amount of nitrogen that the grass is supplied with. And turf grass managers, in theory, are able to control the um, the the water in, in theory, right? We, we never have an irrigation system or a drainage system that works as well as we would like, and we can't control the rainfall. But in in, in theory, turf grass managers have some ability to manage the plant water status or the soil water status. And turf grass managers have some ability to manage the nitrogen supply. But turf grass managers don't have much that they can do about the light that the grass re the, the light that reaches the grass and turf grass managers can't do so much about the temperature. And, and, so understanding the temperature, which the turf grass growth potential does a really good job of showing how temperature is, uh, is changing and, and how grass has the potential to grow at different air temperatures. So that, that is, that, that's something that's useful for looking at the effect of temperature on growth. And when we want to look at the effect of light on growth or on grass's ability to grow, then we look at photosynthetically active radiation and we need to make calculations like this um, that are maybe not not on the tip of everybody's uh, fingers or on, on the tip of your tongue or in your mind. But I want to make you aware of this app where these calculations have been made so you can figure this out for anywhere in the world and you can um, you, you can have an idea of how the light will be for the turf at your location. I do intend to make that app even a little bit more user-friendly by providing like a one page, uh, infographic or, or something like that, like based on the input, once you've got the input, the way you want it, when you have the 
time and the date and the latitude and longitude the way you want it, then I'll add a button to say, do you want to download data from this site? And it'll make like a, a one-page in- infographic that kind of summarizes both the instantaneous and the maybe the monthly and the annual full sunlight at that location. And then you can just say, okay, if we have if we have shade, this is what the restriction uh, in light would be based on what it could potentially be in full sun. So that is enough about this. I oh no, it's not. No, it's not. I want to show one more thing. If you if you'll humor me, um, I'm gonna change to show this. Uh, I made another update to the ATC website in the past week. Um, I I adjusted the menu at the top. So if if you're looking at the pancake menu, uh, you know the where there's just those lines and it 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 squishes down, or a cheeseburger menu or something something like that. And then if you're on a mobile device and the um, the menu looks like that, you can just click on it and it will expand. If you're on a larger screen device, you'll see a menu across the top. So you've got blog, that hasn't changed, podcasts, that hasn't changed, soil tests, that hasn't changed. But I changed the research tab and I put a direct li- two new direct links in there. One is a direct link to the clip vol- clipping volume project page. Just to if you want to quickly get some information about clipping volume, It reduces the number of clicks to get there. Previously, you would have had to click on projects and then select the clipping volume project. You can still get there that way, but now if you just directly click on clipping volume, it's going to go directly there, give a quick overview, and give uh, links to all the clip vault tag posts, a couple videos about it, about how to record the data, of the ebook that I wrote, One Bucket at a Time, about clipping volume. So I think that is useful. And then uh, these are also things that I sometimes want to get directly to that page. The other one is I put a direct link to the Shiny Apps page because previously you would have had to go to projects and that uh, to me is uh, is like one too many clicks. So now we can just go right to the Shiny Apps page and we can find, for example, like the OM246 calculator or we could find the global DLI app or uh, calculating the ET or calculating your GP avatar or this particular one, the PPFD by time, date, and location. So that is, um, that's another menu item that has changed. And what else did I change? Uh, so yeah, so basically you can go directly to Clipfall, you can go directly to Shiny Apps, you still got the link to sign up for the ATC newsletters, and in the About page I put a direct link for Pace Turf because I've I've noticed sometimes people are searching for topics on the ATC website when I think that there there happens to not be very much information about that on the ATC website, like Black Layer. Right, black black layer is something that is a problem in the soil. There's not much information about that on the ATC website. There's a ton of information about that on Pace Turf. So I want to make sure that people are able to get over to Pace Turf easily if they want to search for that kind of information. All right, now I will really really sign out. Um, so you will find links to all of these uh, apps and websites that I've mentioned, and and in particular that blog post about shade and sun, which has a link to this Shiny app, which you can also get directly from the ATC website. Uh, I, I will put all of these in the show notes. So thank you so much for your interest in these topics. I will sign off for now and be back soon with another interesting turf grass topic. For ATC from Akihabara, I am Micah Woods.